Here we're going to do another example of drawing a kinematic diagram and figuring out links, joints, loops, degrees of freedom, mobility, stuff like that. This mechanism has no practical application that I can see, but it does have lots of different types of links and joints and is good to use for practice. So we'll start out by counting how many links there are. So ground is all one link because the ground does not move relative to itself. So we can just imagine here that the whole ground is all connected. So ground is link one. So now let's see, we'll label some more. So there's two, three, four links there to make that sort of four bar and then five. It's this triangular link. And then we have this slide over here, six. Pink bar is seven. And the other gray bar is eight. And we can connect that ground background here. All ground is one link, always. So L equals eight. Now joints, let's see. So we've got one here, There's this is a slider joint. So let's make note of that. So the slider will be prismatic. Everything else looks like a revolute, it's all dots. Now, this joint right here is going to double count. It's a multiple joint because it has three things connected to it. Links three, four, and five are all connected. So we'll call that multiple joint. So now we need to go through and actually count up joints. So we have one for the sliding joint, and then we've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So total joint order equals 10 because that yellow one that circled, that's a second order joint. So you could say it's one joint with an order of two. Um, in total joint order, it will count as two. So that's why we say J equals 10. So now we need to figure out how many loops would be required to solve this. So L equals J minus L plus one. So that's gonna be 10 minus eight plus one equals three. So three loops and basically a loop must just start and end at the ground. So we'll draw some, um, some loops here in yellow. So we could have this kind of standard four bar, it looks familiar, make a loop there. Um, we can make a loop with links four, five, eight in ground. So we'll draw that one in green. And it's okay that some of the loops touch each other. Okay. The loops are just to basically, we'll use those later um, to actually do math, but it's to figure out what is the way that you can touch every single link and every single joint. And that way you could calculate where each of the positions are. So now link six and seven, we still haven't touched those. So we need one last loop and where we would touch those links. So um, we can say that, we'll draw this one in blue and say if we went two, three, five, seven, six, and then back to the beginning. So that would be another loop. Now, normally, because we wanna know how far the slider has gone, then you would have to have something that go goes in the direction of the slider. So like whichever way the slider moves here, so that would kind of all, all connect back. So now let's figure out what is the mobility. 
m equals three times l minus one minus two j. So three times eight minus one, which is seven, minus two times 10 equals 21 minus 20 equals one. So m equals one. Now we need to see how many degrees of freedom are there? Does a mobility of one make sense? Is there only one degree of freedom? Well, thinking about it, if we look at the picture, there's a hint because omega is given over here for link two. So that would mean your motor is attached to link two. Now there's not an omega given anywhere else. So there's probably just one motor, which would be one degree of freedom, but we kind of need to figure out if that's reasonable. Okay, because like maybe the slider is actuated or something. So we know that for, we look at this motor. Um, so if we put link two in a certain position, say the motor is holding link two in a certain position, then that's going to lock, let's see, ground two, three, and four. These would all be locked into place. Okay, so that wouldn't move. So now if that doesn't move, uh, we know that link four doesn't move. Well, four, five, and eight are also a four bar linkage with ground. So if four doesn't move and ground doesn't move, five and eight must be in the same position. So these also become static. Now this whole thing is ground or static. Well, if link five is in one position, then six and seven aren't going anywhere. So then they all become connected and just one degree of freedom makes sense. If you have your motor on link two, you put, put that in a certain position, nothing else moves. Now, if we want to talk about joint closure, actually, let me erase um, all of that mess right there. So looking for joint closure, we remember joints can be form closed. That is the joint keeps its shape due to geometry. or it can be force closed, which means that basically you gotta hold the two pieces together for them not to move. Um, so you've gotta hold it together or the joint will fall apart. So let's look at what joints fall into each of these categories. So looking at this, we have a bunch of pin joints. It looks like all of the revolute joints are pin joints. So the pin joints are force, or sorry, form closed. So joints two through 10 are all form closed. Now this slider joint, if you think about it, um, it's just kind of resting there on that ground. It would be easy for you to pick it up and then it wouldn't be a slider joint anymore. So that would be force closed. You've got to actually hold it onto the ground for it to be a slider joint. If it just starts floating in the air, that's bad. So this is the type of joint closure.